Uh, good morning. This is January 22nd, 2021. And uh, it was two days ago that uh, we had this momentous occasion in Washington, D.C., where the new president was inaugurated and uh, we had the vote uh, by Kamala Harris uh, to turn the Senate to a new majority party uh, with the House of Representatives already uh, with a Democratic majority. So um, these these three things, especially the inauguration of a new president, uh, would together be a, a remarkable day in our history, but all the more so after what happened some two weeks ago now with the riot at the Capitol. What a contrast. What a contrast. And what, what a relief it was, this uh, inauguration of Joseph Biden. A relief. Uh, Stephen Colbert, uh, I think, said it very well, that it's as if we've been at, at sea in a, in a ship in a huge storm for four years. We've been in a storm for four years. And suddenly, we're out of the storm. And not entirely. I'll say more about that. But at least the the captain of the ship. We have a new captain of the ship. We have a captain who's <clears throat> who's known for his empathy and his decency, which uh, the captain up until two days ago was devoid of. So it's a it's a it's a, a truly uh, historical uh, event now, uh, with the possibility of a real renewal. Uh, you know, uh, on New Year's Eve every year, uh, we can appreciate how uh, it's a time of, of renewal, even rebirth. Uh, that's an annual thing, but it's based on a date. There's some convention, the Gregorian calendar, that uh, on, at midnight on December 31st, uh, it's a new year, and uh, we can use that convention to appreciate that uh, we do have a chance to start over, but then we always have a chance to start over. Um, in, in Buddhism, we speak of the sort of uh, con conventional rebirth that happens when we're when we die at the age of seventy or eighty or ninety or whatever. Um, even for those of you who uh, don't buy this matter of rebirth, it's 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 a useful metaphor at the very least. Um, there's the the what most people think of um, rebirth as the the death of the body and uh, and then the rebirth, uh, and said usually within forty nine days, but who knows. But then there's also there's a second kind of rebirth that we speak of, which is a continual, continuous rebirth that really every minute, less than a minute, every breath is a rebirth. It is. This is, this is not just a metaphor. Uh, every breath we are being reborn. There is no self that we're stuck with from moment to moment. Oh, it's way, way more rapid than just every birth, because there's no <clears throat> there's no self substance. 
uh, we, we are we are all in flux. So of course every it's all rebirth. There's nothing but rebirth. And on a day like we had on Wednesday with the inauguration, uh, it's more than an annual uh, kind of observance on December 31st. This is this is a big change. What what the change will end up being is we can't be sure. But there's a big change now, and uh, it was a it was a it was a day. To celebrate, it was it was a release after this hurricane we've had for four years. A release, and that's why uh, I think many many people uh, people I talked with expressed uh, recounted how they had found themselves, to their surprise, in tears at the inauguration. An inauguration, a political event but much more so. Naturally, it's only natural that <clears throat> with everything that's gone on, uh, especially this past year, the pandemic, above all, the pandemic and the, the, uh, the unemployment and other economic battering that we've all taken, the, the alarming progress of uh, climate change, progressive climate change, <clears throat> the civil unrest on January 6th and much more than that, uh, everything that's brewing in uh, the uh, right-wing domestic terrorism and uh, Christian nationalism, all of that is working on people. People are aware of this bubbling underneath. And then the ongoing um, racial inequity, economic inequity. This, <laughs> has anyone alive ever seen such a perfect storm of crises? And at least to have now, to have an administration that, 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 by all indications, is determined to take the reins and to now federalize uh, what needs to be done with a pandemic, and from so, so much comes from the from addressing that. What a what a day it was! It all came together, and this uh, the bright sun there on the steps of the Capitol that had just been under siege. It's really a remarkable, remarkable week we have here. Uh, I, I was thrilled uh, to, to see Lady Gaga singing uh, our national anthem, especially that line when very dramatically she raised her arm and said that our flag was still there. Still there. And, 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 and what the flag represents is our, our integration as a, as a country, as our unity, or at least our, the promise, the possibility of unity. What may be the most lasting memory most of us have of the of the inauguration was the this uh, sublime poem by Amanda Gorman, uh, who in night in 2017 became our our was named our first uh, our first youth poet laureate. What a what a reading! What a performance she gave. I printed it out and uh, I'm going to mention a couple of lines uh, this morning that really struck me as um, it would, uh, the the hope and the faith that she expressed. The hope and the faith. Uh, one can't help but feel inspired by it. 
when she said, uh, we've braved the belly of the beast. We braved, <laughs> we braved the president number 40, 45, uh, and, and we're still braving all of this, these terrible crises. And then her line when she said, a nation uh, that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. Simply unfinished. This is such a, a wonderful way to understand our country and each of us as an individual. Because the, the country is just uh, a collection of individuals. That no, none of us, not a single one of us as an individual can be broken even though we are unfinished. So we have a very real possibility of, if not returning to normal, whatever normal is, at least this moving, shifting back toward the more normal uh, with less violent hatred of other us and them. But it's it's not going to happen overnight. We all know that. You don't have to be a Buddhist to, to recognize that when something has the kind of momentum behind it that uh, has developed over the past four years, something like the civil unrest and the political uh, hatred, that this is not going to stop on a dime. It's, uh, it's four years of, even more, but especially these last four years, four years of, of what we in Zen we call habit energy, habit force that's built up. Um, Think of the word inertia, which uh, Amanda Gorman also mentions in her poem. Inertia, as I remember it from from uh, school, is uh, the law of inertia, that a body at rest tends to stay at rest, a body in motion tends to stay in motion. I think people often use the word inertia just to refer to the first half, a body at rest tends to stay at rest. But we've got some real motion now uh, in two different respects. We've got the motion of a new administration, new legislative branch, new administrative branch, um, new executive, uh, and um, there's something very hopeful about that. Um, and at the same time, uh, we have other features of our karma as a country. Uh, it's just karma. It's just another word for habit energy, uh, our, our, our tendencies. And there's that same law of inertia. A body at, 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 in motion tends to stay in motion. It's still something uh, we have to work at to keep it going in the right direction uh, and to not let it let the other the negative the destructive um, continue any longer than we possibly can let it continue uh, in uh in terms of individual rebirth, um, the the principle uh, is that we are we are reborn. Each of us, as an individual, we are reborn with uh, our our actions of our previous life as the basis. And the actions always means our actions and our words and our thoughts. Those three together uh, establish the basis of rebirth. But then there's another factor, the governing principle. The governing principle 
uh, is the last thought moment before death. The last thought moment. Uh, at the risk of pushing this analogy too far, we can think of uh, Wednesday, the inauguration, um, right, right, right before Joe Biden took the oath of office. We can think of that as the last thought moment. It was a, it was a beautifully organized um, event, um, it's elevated by the. The observance of the to recognize the four hundred thousand over now over four hundred thousand dead, but uh, it seemed from all all I think most people would agree uh, that uh, it was uh, it, it all came together beautifully um, right before he took office. If that's the last thought moment in this uh, rebirth as a nation, then it's very promising. Um, but then the basis, the basis, all of our of the, our actions and words and thoughts of the last four years and long before the last four years, our collective karma, uh, everything we have done for better and for worse, both that we've everything we've done since the Revolutionary War. Our Declaration of Independence. All of this still has this momentum, and it's very sobering. This this week, I I thought of uh, with the inauguration and all. I thought of uh, very very powerful words by the by Chinul Zen Zen Korean Zen master Chinul. He's uh, widely considered the patriarch of Korean Zen. And uh, Chinul, in one of his texts, is talking about the, the the challenge after awakening of coming to terms with the our, our karmic afflictions, that they don't stop with awakening. Our karmic afflictions don't evaporate just through the experience of enlightenment, but then then continue. Um, and this is what he said with regard to that, how the, the, the task of ongoing purification after awakening. <clears throat> he said, the wind ceases, but the waves still surge. That's, that's what we're facing now. A lot of poisonous waves that have been set in motion, especially these last four years, they're not going to stop. But at every step, every breath, there is this possibility of change. We are change. We ourselves are change. And to the degree that we don't fall prey to our reactive tendencies, our karmic afflictions, then just as each one of us is change, we are changing ourselves, starting with sitting, sitting every day. That's the agent of change, of purification. And then we can, we can extend that out into uh, our lives, to everyone we come in contact with. Uh, to to do our best to have um, this the negative parts of our national karma um, sanded away um, and the positive the many positive things about our country uh, nourished it's uh Anything's possible. It's, it will not be easy. We know this as individuals going to Sashin and having, having our afflictions exposed uh, in this silent meditation hours and hours a day. It feels as though 
uh, these last four years, it's not just that, uh, that the people in power have done all the, all the damage, but that, that we've had exposed, uh, what was always there. This is not an original perspective I'm expressing. Others have said it too. The racism, the systemic racism, how it was exposed through uh, the administration of, uh, of Donald Trump, the, the, the economic inequity, the big uh, divide between the haves and the haves not, that's been exposed. Uh, the, well, climate change just goes on and on. Uh, do we have time to, to reverse that, to or even slow it down? Um, and the, the terrible, unnecessary suffering from the pandemic having been so mismanaged, if you could say it was managed at all, uh, so ignored, so neglected. Um, so yeah, it's quite a reckoning now, uh, but at least we have the possibility of uh, resetting, uh, setting, setting a new course where people, the tens, hundreds of millions of people in this country, not to mention the world, but in this country can be, um, can be helped, uh, through legislative action and, uh, a, a more, yes, empathic, uh, and, um, decent, um, model, uh, from the top of the whole structure, Joe Biden. Just one, one last few lines from the poem of Amanda Gorman. We know our inaction and inertia will be the inheritance of the next generation, will be the inheritance of the next generation. Our blunders become their burdens. Sobering, sobering, realistic words that we can all take to heart and each of us uh, do our, our, take responsibility for everything we can do. Thank you.